Okay, before we get to the meat and potatoes of the source coil mod, I wanted to um, say a little bit about my bike because it's not, um, it's a timber sled, uh, snow bike. So that CR250 uh, roller over there will eventually be a um, CR500 AF. I'm gonna have AJ from Service Honda uh, do all the framework on that. Um, I'm gonna speak kind of quick, otherwise this is gonna be like 10 minutes long. So. If you don't want to watch this, I'll probably put an annotation to you where you can skip the drilling, tapping, and then cutting the wires for the source coil mod because it's really simple. But this is the only video, or this is the first video, I believe, on YouTube on how to do this. There's not very much information out there. People have been wondering how you wire it. It's really simple, so I thought I'd make a video. So anyway, what I'm going to say here is I'm going to talk about what makes my CR500 timber sled different than your average CR500, some of the mods I've done. So first, we're gonna talk about my COSO EGT here. Um, so yeah, basically um, what how that's powered is I have what's called a DC to DC buck boost converter. So buck means to like turn a voltage down like 24 volts into 12 volts would be bucking it, boosting it would be turning nine volts into 12 volts. So as this nine volt battery starts to uh, discharge, the voltage will go down so basically how a thermocouple works, I believe that's either a J or a K type thermocouple. Um, basically how that works is you have two dissimilar metals of a certain type and as they heat up, they create a very small voltage. And based on that voltage is what uh, gives the temperature reading. So I wanted to supply um, a good steady 12 volts to that. So as this battery dies, it will keep putting out 12 volts to it, no matter how low the battery gets. And so basically here's the thermocouple probe. It's six inches away from the piston skirt, roughly. Um, when my EGT start, start getting to, let's see, a uh, happy place is like 1150 when it starts getting, 1150 to 1250 when it starts getting about 1250 to 1300. You definitely need to start backing off, otherwise you can melt the piston. So what I do to cool it down is I downshift and then I whack the throttle wide open. All that cool fuel going in will bring the temperature down almost instantly 150 degrees and will cool the piston off. So that way it gives you a good idea of how hard you're pushing your engine. I mean, your coolant temperature can be, you know, fine, but your EGTs are getting really hot, especially I'm going to be running nitrous which I'll get into that later so it will be nice to have or it's very nice to have EGT before the previous owner who had this had this bracket laser cut he had an AEM, AEM wideband gauge in here and he had the he had a lighting coil powering that with a trail tech um, regulator rectifier and a bunch of wires behind the number plate I took all that out simplified it so I don't think that a wideband works very well with a two-stroke. It's just like this video. Um, when I see videos on topics that don't have a lot of information, I'm happy to watch them even if they're long, even if they're not good because there's actually a little bit of information on them. So running a wideband AFR gauge on a two-stroke is something there's not a lot of information on because a lot of people don't do it. Some people say you can do it, some people say you can't. All I'm going off of is EGT and coolant temperature so um what did i want to talk about next yeah we'll talk about coolant temperature so we'll start here um this right here on, on the left side is just the dummy i had to cut the bottom of the tank off i had to cut the bottom of the tank off so that way i could clear this hose we'll talk about that hose in a minute um i used a dr bonner soap bottle to make a coolant catch um my coolant temps never really get over 130 degrees so um, I don't even really need that coolant catch because it's not putting fluid out into the reservoir or expansion tank and then sucking it back in. So basically over here, this radiator on the right side is acting as a tank. It acts as a tank because the radiators don't even do anything. It has a tunnel cooler. So this is the, the top inlet where the hot coolant normally comes in is just a it's capped off so this just acts as a tank that holds the radiator cap so basically um let's see basically so yeah the water pump 
pumps the cool coolant into the head. It comes out hot and then it goes to this thermostat. So before the thermostat is a bypass into the, car into the carb heater so that way the slide doesn't freeze and then that goes back down into that silvery color hose which is the cool side. So then basically from the thermostat here, I'm gonna get a good angle of this. From the thermostat, comes down here to like an Odeker style clamp, not a worm screwdriver clamp. Comes back to my tunnel cooler. So this would be the hot side of the tunnel cooler. Well, many of you probably don't even know what a tunnel cooler is. So a tunnel cooler is basically like a big heat sink. This is off a 19, uh, like 93 to 98, I believe, Articat EXT. So Snowmobile. There, it, this this particular ton of core was used on a ton of snowmobiles in the early 90s, or I guess late 90s. Um, the CR500 vibrates like crazy, so it cracked the ton of core along the side. So I'm gonna order a brand new one and try to rubber mount it. Um, same thing with the nitrous bottle. I can't mount it straight to this panel, otherwise it'll just destroy itself. So I'm gonna put some angle iron on here, and then some angle iron along the side, and then some flat strap here and here. So, so it's it's mounting to these side rails, not to this chintzy panel. So, okay, yeah, so then from basically the cold side of the tunnel cooler um, just runs, it's basically just a straight pipe all the way back to here where then you can see that's where the carb bypasses. Um, if the thermostat isn't open, it's basically coming out before the thermostat through the carb heater and then back into the cold side which this is insulated so that way it can warm up faster when it's just bypassing through the carb heater and the thermostat's closed. And then that basically just goes back into the radiator. Um, you could almost call that an L configuration. So you get what I mean by L, it comes in the side of the radiator and then just goes right down to the water pump. It doesn't come into the top, top's welded shut. So the radiators basically don't even do anything what some people do is they run two thermostats, so they have a thermostat going to their tunnel cooler if it starts getting too hot. This would be like a 130 thermostat, you would have another thermostat. Um, they would be set at 150, then could go to the other radiator, so that way you have a radiator and a tunnel cooler uh, doing the cooling, depending on what um, temperature your bike's running. So, all my vent lines are going up into this bottle of fire fireball that's zip tied on the bottom of the frame so that way they don't get frozen shut um let's see what else um i'm running a pwk a key in pwk air striker with the um adam miller's mre um custom v-force 2 uh it's so it's a it's a custom read spacer for the v-force 2 reads it's been flow tested to check the CFM. It's supposed to flow better than this carb and these reeds are supposed to flow better than anything else you can get on the market right now. So then this is a silicone two and a half inch to three inch silicone pipe that you can get on eBay really cheap to like a silk screen type filter. Um, Outerwares makes it. There's literally no foam filter material. It's just two of these little uh, silk screen like uh, filter socks basically. Okay, so we've talked about the EGT, um, yeah, um, and then we talked about the coolant temp. You can see I have the Trail Tech coolant temp gauge here. Um, so I think that covers EGT, that covers um, coolant temperature. I talked about the carb, I talked about the intake, I talked about the reeds. Okay, the head, the head, I'm gonna have Adam Miller do the twerp. I guess not the full twerp because I, I can't really send him my cases right now to have the case work done, but I would like to have a cylinder ported by him and a head um, cut for smaller volume and then the squish adjusted. So um, yeah, and then I'll have a decompression valve. So what I wanted to say about the dual source coil mod and uh, decompression valve, like so I saw somebody who was saying like his bike is really hard to start he has a cr500e which is like a unicorn bike ignition and then he has a service honda orange ignition i guess i'm not really too familiar with those but he said like one's easy to start the other is hard to start and so i told him hey do the dual source coil mod get the msv billet stator plate that's coming out so what i was thinking though is if he has his head cut and he doesn't have a decompression valve 
then the higher the compression, the more voltage it takes to um, charge the capacitor. You can see um, I unpotted it. <laughs> Um, a CDI here, you can see the big capacitor, you know, capacitive discharge ignition. That's the big capacitor there, this big red component. So having two, sorry, this light is terrible. Um, having two source coils um, will supposedly um, bring, will, 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 it'll bring the, it'll create a higher voltage quicker. So then it should charge this capacitor to maximum voltage faster. I don't know, that all gets really complicated. But um, yeah, so what I was saying though is, so do the dual source coil mod, especially if you don't have a decompression valve and you have your head cut, then it's gonna be harder to start your bike because you have more compression and it take the the higher compression the more voltage it takes to jump the spark gap i believe i have my the spark gap on a cr500 is supposed to be set between uh twenty thousandths and twenty five thousandths so um that's usually what i set it at also um my clutch oil seal was leaking when i first got this bike i took everything off the stator plate to clean it i didn't know that you had the gap uh, what do you call this coil the the uh trigger yeah, the trigger or the exciter. I don't know, there's probably a couple of names for it. Anyway, all it does is this spot on the flywheel here, when that spot, when that spot um, comes across this coil right here, then that's what triggers the ignition. So if you don't gap that, so I gapped it at 15 thousandths, um, but I didn't know to gap it in my bike. Like I was gapped so far, it's probably gapped like an eighth inch. So my bike would start up and run if I was like giving it gas, but as soon as I let it rev below like um, 2250 on my tachometer, it would literally just feel like somebody was like pressing the kill switch. Like it would, would just completely die. And I didn't know what to do. I made some posts and asked a bunch of people and one guy actually did tell me, he like wrote me a paragraph. And I just skimmed it, but he actually did say, hey, you know, check your uh, gap between your uh, trigger coil and your flywheel. So as soon as I did that, the bike ran fine. Um, um, let's see, my flywheel is getting really rusty here. Um, so, yeah, I was going to try to clean this up. It was asking people what I could put on there. They're like, oh, Cosmoline. Uh, WD-40 um, oil and then what Adam Miller was saying is I can take I can plug this hole here at 5 o'clock so there's like 12 1 2 3 4 5 yeah. so the hole this is the drain hole here at 5 o'clock I could plug this and then run like one to two ounces of oil in here obviously I'd put some ultra gray where the rubber grommet is but I was thinking the best way to plug this you could weld it you could try to put like like a rubber plug in there, but I was thinking like, you know, obviously some art gray RTV silicone would probably do the job. I could run some oil in here. If I were to run some oil in here, then probably what I would do on the stator plate is I would um, try to put some gray silicone or something to insulate these two solder points. As you can see, these solder points are already, they are already um, covered in some potting. So like, all this magnet wire is varnished. It should be pretty insulated. I don't even know if oil conducts electricity, but I would probably want to cover these two solder points just so that way, or I guess there would be four. So you have where the coils connect and then you have where you connect your wires to your CDI. So you would want to cover those four points probably if you were to run oil on your left stator side. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. Also right now, I know this is a ton of information, but I mean, I'm going to throw it all out here in one video. It's a little jumbled, but so I made this plug, I made this plug on the lathe that would go into the intake. As you can see, I tried to kind of make it the same shape as, as um, the intake boot here to plug it. So you would, you would plug. You would plug the intake with this. You here you have your Schrader valve. You I probably use a bicycle pump, pump it up to like eight psi, and then I have a two-inch expansion plug to go into the 
MSV exhaust flange. We all know what an MSV exhaust flange looks like. So yeah, you would be putting air through the intake here, and then you would be um, plugging the exhaust with this two inch plug. And then what I was thinking was taking out the spark plug, threading in the 10 mil adapter, for a compression tester, but instead of testing compression, what you would do is you would take out the Schrader valve, so there's no check valve in here, and then you would, instead of a zero to 300 PSI gauge, you would buy a zero to 15 PSI gauge, and then you could see, you would pump it up to eight PSI, and then you could time how long, you know, it holds pressure. Also, what I was saying with the stator plate off, this would be a good time to do a leak down test because you could soap down this uh, left side seal, make sure it's not leaking. You could listen for like bubbles or air coming up out of like the oil cap, um, head gasket. I mean, I don't really need to talk too much about a leak down test of where it could leak out of. It could leak out of the reeds, leak out of the base gasket, um, exhaust valve. I don't know. I guess there's a few places. So coming up on 15 minutes here what else do I want to say I've talked about a ton of stuff um, yeah so I think that pretty much covers all the mods I think I have on my bike I'm gonna miss a few things I do have this really nice um Brembo 19 RCS uh, 14 millimeter master cylinder that uh, goes to this uh, Willwood brake caliper if you're wondering why I have the clutch and the handbrake together, it's like a stunt bike thing. I have a really nice stunt bike that I try to do wheelies on. I kind of suck at wheeling still, but... but um, here, we'll talk about some more stuff. I guess this video is going to be half hour long. Hopefully I can upload a video that long. Anyway, so here's the nitrous bottle heater you got your pressure valve your pressure relief valve so basically if you heat the bottle it brings up your bottle pressure i'm going to be running in the cold so if i freeze the bottle it's going to be really hard to maintain a thousand psi bottle pressure so i have a bottle heater a bottle blanket the pressure valve pressure relief valve basically what that does is that kicks the relay on and off for this uh, bottle heater then on the side of this like little manifold fitting um, will be my pressure gauge. I think that's like 0 to 1300 PSI or 0 to 1500. Here's the uh, Nitrous Express Shark valve. Um, basically, I, instead of running these big 3 a.m. lines, I'm going to be running female um, to like push lock 8th inch polyline. So you can see here's the polyline. It came in a really tight roll. So I've been trying to straighten this out. Like I put two little vice grips on here and then hung it for a while out in the sun so it would kind of straighten out. You can watch videos on like how to straighten poly irrigation pipe. They do it with hot water. Um, anyway, moving on. So this is all gonna be powered. As you see, I'm doing a dual source coil mod. So how am I gonna power all these nitrous solenoids? So basically what I have is a giant 12 amp hour Milwaukee lithium battery which I may get a smaller one. I don't know if I, I need 12 milliamps. That's like a lot of, you know, 18650 lithium ion batteries in series inside the battery. So anyway, I bought this uh, 3D printed uh, little, you know, base here. So that's gonna power everything. It's all gonna be battery powered. And here we have, my phone's gonna die, so I gotta wrap this up. And here we have a, Fuse block, we've got a bus bar for all the negatives. We've got some relays, try to focus this. The blue wires, so the nitrous solenoid is gonna, I ohm tested it, it's only like one ohm, so that's gonna be a pretty low impedance. So that's gonna be pretty, that'll probably draw like nine amps. The fuel pump solenoid is, is like a lot less. I can't remember what I ohm tested it at, but that should only use an amp or two. Um, so maybe total amp draw between the heater I guess this heater draws like, like, what does it say on here? 240 watts, 315, I don't know. I think it's gonna draw like 15 to 20 amps or something, I don't know. 
Um, here's an RC plane fuel tank. I may just have this little standalone fuel tank hook up to the fuel pump. Here's a fuel filter. Um, or I may just uh, drill a hole in my four gallon Clark fuel tank and then put another petcock in there and run another fuel line back to this fuel pump. Um, then I wouldn't need the filter. I wouldn't need the standalone fuel tank, but then I would have another line coming back into this box. Um, let's see, here's my soldering station. So yeah, um, I'm gonna obviously solder the wires. Um, let's see, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, here's my last piston. I'm really curious about piston wash. Um, you know, the bottom of the piston being light brown because the piston's getting hot. As you can see, I kind of wiped off the wash, but there really wasn't any wash on there. My bike was running super rich with my initial jetting at 12,000 feet. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, this is like every kid's dream or every man's dream right here. <laughs> Fucking bike is crazy. But um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. So I'm gonna move to the next segment. And uh, one other thing I forgot to mention before. So I have a Recluse Z-Start clutch. I'm not sure if I said that or not, but in, anyway, how most people torque the flywheel is they put the bike in first gear and then hold the brake. Or you have a flywheel holder tool, but the CR500 doesn't have holes for a seat for a flywheel holder tool. So so what I figured out you could do is if you just connect, if you just lock the Kickstarter to the foot peg, then it will allow you, it'll like lock the engine. And then you can torque, you can torque uh, the flywheel. So yeah, um, otherwise you're gonna have to use an impact. I used an impact last time. I don't have an impact where I'm at right now, but when I had it at my shop, I used an impact and barely zipped it on and it seemed like it was a real, it was much more difficult to take off um, this time around. I had to use a big breaker bar and a big crescent with my flywheel puller um, to get the flywheel to pop off. So yeah, uh, the gist of that is um, handy trick, just put your, uh, connect, put a hook connecting the Kickstarter to the foot peg and you should be able to torque your flywheel down. There it pops without, uh, needing a holding tool or, and if you don't have a recluse clutch, you can just use, uh, put it in first and use the brake. Yeah, so that's it. So here we are at Ace Hardware. Um, in order to do this mod, you need to drill two holes here and here with a number 30 bit. And then you'll tap it out with, sorry, that's really shaky, um, an M4 by 0 0.70 thread tap. And then what I'm gonna use is um, a 30, a M4 by 0 0.70 thread by 30 mil long stainless button head Allen cap screw. Um, so those would be these here. Um, stock comes with 25 mil long um uh i'm gonna run a 30 so as you can see the 30 um brings you to the very end of the plate whereas the 25 is not quite all the way through um let's see what else do i want to say the lighting coils on here just because i haven't received the uh source coil but it'll be here today um anything else i want to say oh yeah so then um the lock washer i'm just running um an m4 lock stainless lock lock washer um with that so 
Um, yeah, I believe that should cover. Yeah, so you just have to drill two holes with a number 30 bit, tap it out M4 by 0 0.70 thread, and then the bolts will be um, M4 by 0 0.70 or point. Oh yeah, 0 0.70 by 25 or 30 mil long with a stainless lock washer. And then in case you're wondering the uh the Allen key is a two and a half mil. Alright, so we'll do a little unboxing video. Um I just went and picked this up at the post office. Um so yeah, I ordered it on a Monday night and now it's Friday and it arrived. Um, let's see. The part number is RSC, as in Ricky Stater, Ricky Stater Coil 19. The price, I believe, was $75. And the shipping was really cheap. It was like flat rate envelope, is what it said. I mean, this is obviously a box, but the shipping was like only two dollars and eighty cents it came within like a week so um i haven't even opened this um i'll try to do a unboxing here with one hand so looks like we got a little airbag pop that yeah so there's the part number rsc19 this fits um let's see i think that's all that's in the box besides an invoice which or maybe no there's a sticker in here Yeah, so we got a cool Ricky Stater sticker. Can add that to all my collection of stickers that I got. Um, yeah, so a uh, sticker. Looks like maybe, let's see, two stickers. Um, just the invoice here. So it has my address on there, but let's see. I might have already flashed the address. I don't even know. Yeah. But um yeah, so it was uh two dollars and eighty cents for shipping, seventy-five for the coil. Um so yeah, let me see if I can open this one handed here. Um try to cut this tape, got the tape cut with my thumbnail. Let's see I'll show opening it here. So Looks like it's bubble wrapped. Um, here, I'll do. Uh, let's see. Sticky bubble wrap. So, yeah, this coil is a little different than stock as far as like what it looks like. Sorry, I should turn this back sideways. Um, yeah, so that's the coil right there. Um, I think this uh, laminated iron stack should be the same thickness as the lighting coil and um, the stock source coil. So yeah, here, let me bring the stator plate over here. So yeah, that's the lighting coil. And then here's the new uh, source coil. So I'm gonna cut the video and then I will show you how to ease, the best way to cut the wires Sorry, my phone's about to die. The best way to cut the wires, and obviously a lot of people are curious on how to wire it up, which it's really simple. So yeah, I'm um, gonna cut it. So finally, we're to the part of the video where we actually start doing the dual source coil mod. So tools you will, you will need for this are an X-Acto knife, strippers, cutters, and a two and a half mil Allen key. So assuming that you've used a number 30 bit to drill the holes, an M4 tap to make threads in those holes and you've bought uh, M4 by 25 or 30 mil stainless bolts then you're ready to bolt on your additional source coil and start connecting the wires so I'm gonna put the phone down here and try to get it to focus bear with me so basically what you want to do is, or how you're going to wire it is, so we're going to call this here the upper solder point. We're going to call this the lower solder point. 
So how it's wired right now is the white wire connects to the upper solder point. Then you have your 20,000 turns of fine uh, magnet wire that makes up your source coil. And then that connects here. And then this is where it uh, the lower solder point, which is the blue wire that goes back to the CDI. So white wire at the top, blue wire at the bottom. So what you wanna do now to add the additional source coil is you just need to make a loop between the lower solder point on your original coil and the lower uh, solder point on the Ricky Stater coil. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna run the wire down through this wire holder, um, tuck it into this gap or groove and then up through this wire holder and then solder it here. So you'll have a loop. And then what's gonna be at the upper solder point of the additional coil is just the blue wire. So you'll loop the back and then you connect your blue wire here. So basically now you have two coils in series. And the best way to cut the blue wire is like this so as you can see here I made a mark it's hard to see let me really focus it you can see there's a, a mark right here that I made with a sharpie so you cut it there and when you cut it there then that should give you enough length where you don't have to you don't have to dig out this black potting material and solder a new wire on here you can just use the existing wire the existing blue wire if you cut it there and then just uh loop it over to here so then you can leave this potted and then you only have to solder two points so you have to solder your lower solder point with your loop and then what's left from here to here and i'm going to trim back this little sleeve a little bit will give you enough length to solder here so you just, you don't need any additional wire. You just cut it here, you cut it here, and then you connect, you loop it on the back and solder it there, and then solder it there. Super simple. So um, that pretty much explains it. So I'm gonna cut the video off. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna cut that blue wire, strip it, and then we'll pick back up. Okay, so uh, here's the next step, or the previous step that I just explained about looping the bottom. So. Um, to be honest, I actually kind of fucked this up as far as gauging how long my length needed to be. So, um, I'm sure you remember, um, sorry, this is hard to do. I had a Sharpie mark in this area here and I ended up cutting it actually here and I was still a little short on my loop. So as you can see, um, I was really hoping the loop would come down through this wire track or groove down by this tab all the way down here and then up but as you can see my loop is much shorter it's almost straight across so that's because I gauged the uh, where I needed to cut it wrong so that's the beauty of this video is uh you can learn from it and understand that you really probably need to cut the wire more like i don't know somewhere up in here or if you don't want to you could just use a different piece of wire dig out this solder point make your own loop and then you'll have plenty of blue wire left to connect your upper solder point so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take the exacto I'm gonna put it in this sleeve. I'm gonna cut this sleeve back. And then we're gonna run the blue wire. We're gonna run the blue wire up this first wire track here to this point. And then the mod will be basically done. So besides soldering, yeah. And as you can see, I kind of bent I kind of bent that little brass tab over. I kind of bent it over so that way I could kind of um, 
accommodate, sorry, I'm trying to push the wire in so you can see it, so I can kind of uh, accommodate for, um, yeah, misjudging how long that loop needed to be. So some people might say, well, oh, you didn't, perf you didn't do it perfect and you won't ever be able to find another stator plate again. Um, I mean, obviously I could find one of them, but it would be super expensive, new or used either way. So am I happy with this? It's fine. I mean, the CR500 vibrates like crazy. So maybe it's better that my wire isn't down in here without a sleeve because it could rub through. I don't know. I think it's fine like this. I'm not complaining. Like, I mean, like I said, you can learn from my mistake. I'm not upset about it. It's going to work fine. So yeah, moving on, we're going to, I'm going to solder this lower solder point and then I'm going to connect the wire here this blue wire here and then we'll pick back up okay so now the mod is done um let's see what I want to say um yes yeah, so where should I pick up at so yeah I went ahead and soldered the lower solder point and then also um then I um cut cut this little sleeving back and then ran um, what was left of the blue wire up to the upper solder point and then uh, soldered it, cleaned it off with acetone. As you can see I got a little overzealous on the acetone so the acetone started to react with the plastic kind of turned it whitish. I'm not worried about it. I used to be like a super perfectionist and now um, I just more look at things as like a learning experience or whatever. So I guess what you can take away from this video is, yeah, don't use too much acetone. Um, be mindful of where you cut your wire. I cut it right about here, right there. So, and it turned out to be a pretty good length actually. Before I thought I screwed it up and could have made a longer loop there in the back. But looking at the wire here, I mean, I think I cut it in a pretty decent spot. So yeah, you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, I can't believe I just watched like a 35 minute long video or maybe 40, I don't even know. I haven't put it all together. Just to do that, because it was so simple, all you have to do is loop the back and connect the blue in the front, loop the rear, loop the lower solder point, and then connect what's left of that to the upper solder point. It's that simple. So yeah, um, I don't really think I, have much else to say. Um, I'd like to put it on and uh, go ahead and fire up the bike, but I still have a bunch of other stuff I need to do. Um, yeah, I guess one, the last thing I want to say is that um, I heard this mod is good for nitrous because of the increased cylinder pressure tries to blow, it, blow out the spark. So hopefully this will give me a stronger spark at kicking speeds and then also a stronger spark just in general, which hopefully will help um, under high compression situations when I'm running the spray. So yeah, um, oh yeah, and I was thinking to myself, if you think this video is too long, then uh, feel free to go ahead and make your own, your own short video if you want. I and would be happy to see other videos on this.